<laughs> Couldn't sleep, eh? I bet you was wondering whether Father Christmas got your note up the chimney, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Santa, please fill my stocking up with something I can play with. But don't make it a... <laughs> but as long as it's not the wife's leg. <laughs> Mr. Bash, I am earlier than normal because Mr. Rumbold has called a very important meeting about uh, the Christmas sales drive. Oh, yeah. So would you mind setting up the table and chairs in the centre of the floor and getting some coffee? Yes, I would mind. It ain't my job. That militant attitude is not part of the Christmas spirit. And what is more, I shall be reporting you to the head of your union. Oi. I am the head of my union. <laughs> and I am not going to alter my intransigent attitude under any circumstances or for bribes under 50p. <laughs> You uh, like cream in yours, don't you, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> Let the blood come back to your head before you move. <laughs> I'll be all right, I'll be all right. Mr. Luke is unwell. Got a terrible hangover, Captain Peacock, due to a pre-Christmas celebration with a young lady. It was a sudden change in altitude coming up in the lift that brought it on again. He went as white as a sheet, so I had to put my arm round him. <laughs> no, that was the reason I went as white as a sheet. <laughs> you knew we had an important conference this morning. You should have gone to bed early. Oh, I did, Captain Peacock. I went to bed early. Then I woke up at five o'clock and thought, hello, I've got an important conference this morning. So I got up and went straight home. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're here in body, if not in spirit. <laughs> There's plenty of spirit left. <laughs> well, good morning, Miss Browns. I'm sorry it's such an early call. You're lucky to have me at all. I don't know, looking like that, I'm not too sure. <laughs> what have you got under there? Spare cheese rolls? I didn't have any time for any breakfast. I have ordered coffee. Yeah, not ordered, Captain. Requested. There is a subtle difference, you know. <laughs> Incidentally, is Mr. Granger and Mrs. Slogan, are they coming to this top-level chat of yours? Of course, Mr. Bash, now hurry along. I don't think Mrs. Slocum will be. And why not? Well, she ran me this morning in a terrible state. Her bus route's on strike and she can't find your umbrella. What has not finding her umbrella got to do with her not getting here? Well, she's got to walk a mile to the station, hasn't she? And in the rain, she's afraid in case her rinse runs. <laughs> I better cancel her coffee. No, no, no. Mrs. Slocum is a resourceful woman. If anyone can think of a way of getting here, she will. <laughs> what a journey. Do you know, it was dark when I left. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Blimey, you must have frightened a few people riding your broomstick silhouetted against the moon. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got a lift in a friend's car, so I took the opportunity of bringing this up. It's a present for Christmas for a gardening friend of mine. Only I propped it up against the arga, and the bristles bent with the heat. <laughs> Real twigs at all. It's just cheap Japanese muck. Who I was too keen. Mm. <laughs> it's disgusting what rubbish some firms are selling these days. You should have reported them to the Consumer Council or whatever they call it. Where did you get it? Here in Harbour. <laughs> and I hope we're not going to be late tonight. Because I've left Winston clinging to the curtain ring. He refuses to come down. The mere sight of my pussy drives him mad. <laughs> Is Winston the lodger? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's my canary. <laughs> he got out when I was changing his stamp paper. Well, I, I think we'd all better sit down. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Oh. Lucas, Miss Brahms, let's sit down, please. What about Mr. Granger? Never mind, old Granger. Where's Mr. Rumbold? Oh, uh, I don't think he's arrived yet. 
No, typical of old Jack he is. Gets us here at the crack of dawn and doesn't bother to turn up himself. It was quite a gale blowing when I left this morning. <laughs> Perhaps every time he turned to say goodbye to his wife, the wind caught him behind his ears and blew him in again. <laughs> in his office to, uh, in case he's already in. I was worried about getting here on time today, you know. And, and I couldn't put in an alarm call because I've been tossed for a week. <laughs> What's that? Tos, T-O-S, temporarily out of service. <laughs> Couldn't you have it fixed? Yes, as soon as I pay the bill. <laughs> Crown everything. My, my striker on me alarm clock's gone on strike. All it does is buzz. So there I was, with it clutched in my hand, by my ear, and I couldn't get to sleep for the ticking. Anyway, <laughs> here we are then. Refreshments for the troops, courtesy of Captain Peacock. On the contrary, they're ten pence each. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was too good to be true. Uh, ladies. Now, where was I in my story? You were lying in bed with it ticking in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> my alarm clock doesn't work. It's <laughs> well, probably was... your pinger, you know. But what happened? Well, there I was, you see, lying there, worried about going to sleep, and, and I dozed off, and I dreamt I was winding it up. Woke up wet through. <laughs> Inspiration? No, I hadn't screwed the top of my hot water bottle. <laughs> can, I, can I have your attention, please? Now, as Mr. Rumbold is obviously un unavoidably detained, I, I think I should take over. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> now, quite simply, uh, what we're looking for is ideas to push Christmas sales on this floor. Now, has anybody come up with anything? No, I haven't come up with anything. Mind you, it was touch and go when I saw Miss uh, Brahms' cheese roll. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, as head of the ladies' section, you must have some ideas. Well, I've been thinking about this. And I think we should have lots of trimmings. Something to make people sit up and take notice. Mm -hmm. uh, give us the real Christmas spirit. You know, snow round the display stands, mistletoe in the fur muffs, a sprig of holly in the underwear. <laughs> if that doesn't make people sit up and take notice, nothing will. <laughs> I've got an idea. Why don't we give away uh, Kisses to the gentleman customers. <laughs> he was talking about the ladies' department, not ours. <laughs> I meant that. No, I'm not quite with you, Mr. Humphrey. Well, when a gentleman comes in to, to buy something for his wife, Miss Brahms could give away a free kiss with every purchase over ten pounds. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, are you suggesting that I also should do that? No, we'd make a reduction in your case, anything over ten pounds. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, will you keep your mouth shut? I will if you will. I, I do hope I'm not too late. I'm afraid Mrs. Granger fa failed to rouse me this morning. Oh, that's understandable, Mr. Granger. Don't sit down, Mr. Granger. And I'll just do a recap on the ideas so far. I shouldn't bother. Look, <clears throat> what we're looking for something to attract people of all ages. And what we must bear in mind is that when people come shopping in a store like ours, they bring their children. Now, if we could perhaps think of something to uh, occupy them while their parents browse around. What a good idea. <laughs> I dislike children intensely. <laughs> Nasty, noisy things. Children should be seen and not heard. And preferably not seen. <laughs> I trust you will not give vent to those feelings in front of our customers. Of course I shall not. When they come into the star with their offspring, I shall give them my usual warm, welcoming smile. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> hell, sent them out screaming. Now, let me put a point to you. Now, Mrs. Slocum, let us say that you are a customer, uh, you have a child with you, and you're on your way up in the lift. Now, the doors happen to open on this floor. Now, what sight would attract your attention and uh, make you stop here? Her husband buying his girlfriend a present. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, if you interrupt just once more... Yeah, I know. You'll send me home. I wish you had stayed there. I know what'll attract the mother and child to this floor. Why don't we have someone dressed up as Father Christmas beckoning to the little boy? <laughs> <laughs> 
who are you suggesting, Mr. Humphrey? Well, someone not too young, which rules out Mr. Lucas and myself. And someone not too old. Which rules out Mr. Granger. And someone with a kindly face. Which rules out Captain Peacock. <laughs> so it's between Mrs. Slocum and Miss Browns, really, isn't it? Well, we could easily hire a Father Christmas. No, oh, Mrs. Slocum, I think a Father Christmas is rather old hat these days. Well, it wasn't my idea. What about having a reindeer? And a little sledge on wheels to take the customers up to the counter. <laughs> and where are we going to get a reindeer from? Well, I wasn't meaning a real one, was I? I mean, you know, one of those skins like a pantomime horse. Oh, yes, and who's going to get into that? Well, you could get in the front, I could get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. I'd get hydrophobia. You mean claustrophobia, dear. Hydrophobia is when you get bitten by a mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> With him in there, she'd probably get both. <laughs> Could we try to be a little more practical, please? Well, why don't we have a glee club? You know, every time the lift doors open, we all burst into a carol like Good King Wenceslas. I am not going to sing Good King Wenceslas. Now, we'd make an exception in your case, Mr. Granger. You could sing All I Want for Christmas is Me Two Front Teeth. <laughs> Burst into song every time the lift opened. No, oh, what a pity. I was looking forward to being a count of ten. <laughs> <laughs> morning, everybody. Good morning, morning, Mr. Morning. Morning. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry I'm late. I see you've already started. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, we, we did have a few ideas, but nothing concrete has emerged mm. except the uh, usual festive decorations. <laughs> well, you'd be pleased to hear that the matter has been resolved by young Mr. Grace, who telephoned me this morning just as I was leaving home, which is why I was late. A likely story. <laughs> it seems that he has purchased a number of novelty costumes and that it would be an amusing gimmick if the members of staff were to wear them over the Christmas period. sort of costumes? Well, I understand that they're characters from nursery rhymes and fairy tales. Oh, I like it, I like it. <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, we're not a children's department. Uh, yes, that, that's true, but uh, we're all children at heart. And it helps to take the hard, brittle, commercial edge off Christmas. Besides, I can assure you that no other store in London is doing it. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> I am certainly not a child at heart. Or you could dress up as Scrooge. <laughs> now, each department is going to have a, a sort of grotto effect over the counters. Yours will be built during the lunch hour. Hmm? Uh, trust I'm not being included in this charade. Of course you are. Even I have been requested to enter into the spirit of things and let my hair down. Oh, well, you're lucky you can come as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Good morning. What time is it? Uh, ooh, 12.35. Oh, I'm starving. You should listen to my stomach. I have been. <laughs> It was ridiculous bringing us in at that time this morning. Still, there's one consolation. Our department has its Christmas lunch today. But it's ages to Christmas. Ah, well, you see, last year they found they couldn't cope with all the store at once. So this year they've decided to stagger us. Oh. Yeah, they got the idea when they saw you staggering last year. <laughs> Don't be cheeky, Mr. Mash. What's that? Oh. Now, this, this here, is the new pointer display model for these everlasting types. It's got a little motor in the base and it plays a lovely drop of belly music. Now, listen to this. Well, hey! It does that every few minutes. I think it's awful. Where did you get it from? Oh, well, it started out in the sports department with a soccer boot on the end. <laughs> it did, but after it kicked a couple of footballs through the window, of course, <laughs> it was relegated. Well, it's going to be relegated again. Oh, yeah. Captain Peacock, are you free? 
No, Mrs. Slipman. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you're free, Captain Peacock, I wish to complain about the tights display model. It's too late to complain. I've already approved it with Mr. Rumbo. Well, it's not staying in my department, even if I have to move it myself. Kindly leave it where it is, Mrs. Slocum. And that is an order. <laughs> Get behind your counter. Excuse me, Captain Peacock. Mm. Would you mind initialing this bill? Uh, certainly. <laughs> what a lovely tune that is. Mr. Granger and I were arguing as to what ballet it came from. Yes, it's very familiar, and I think it's Tchaikovsky. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Granger, it's the Nutcracker Suite. <laughs> Now, come on, everybody. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Lufus, you mustn't sit there. Captain Peacock is joining us today, and I think that he should sit at the head of the table. Well, that will be an honour. Blimey, you know, they get bigger every year. Don't be so personal. <laughs> I was referring to the crackers. I wonder what I've got in mine. Well, you mustn't pull it till after the pud. <laughs> I can't get over not having to queue up. Yes, it's nice to be waited on once a year. <laughs> May I wish you a rather premature happy Christmas and uh, offer this wine as my contribution to the gala. Okay? Oh, that's very kind of you, Stephen. <laughs> uh, has anyone got a corkscrew? Uh, that won't be necessary. You. Uh, just unscrew it. <laughs> Don't forget your hat. Uh, very well, if I must. White wine's my favourite. Mm. Thin blank coop. Whereabouts is coop? That's co op. <laughs> Can I have your tickets, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. What tickets? Well, for the Christmas lunch. Didn't you see the notice on the board? No. Well, you better buy one now. He can't. Well, all entries is closed to this table. From the counterfoils, we've only got five portions allotted. Well, what am I going to have, then? Pop, pop, shepherd's pie or halibut. I'll have halibut with Ollie in it. You want to serve yourself? Oh, sir, that's marvellous, that is, isn't it? I don't seem to have any turkey. I <laughs> think the bird... Only Miss Sprout. <laughs> I think the bird is just coming. Uh. Well, uh, this is always an exciting moment. <laughs> oh, I hope mine's going to be bigger than that. I rather suspect this is for all of us. Well, it's never turkey. It's more like an emaciated budget. <laughs> well, uh, has, uh, has anybody any preference? Yes, Oliver. <laughs> I, I like a little white meat and, uh, and not too much stuffing. It gives me indigestion. I've got indigestion just looking at it. <laughs> uh, I'll serve the ladies first, uh, Mrs. Slocum. I'll have a wing and a slice of breast. <laughs> he seems to be putting up quite a fight. <laughs> I think it's the knife that's blunt. Ah, well, there we are. <laughs> Do you require stuffing, Mrs. Slocum? <laughs> oh, he's going with a swing, then. <laughs> Just a spoonful. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, uh, would you like to dispense the wine? Oh, yeah. Mr. Granger? <laughs> uh, not too much. Uh, I tend to doze off if I have it at lunchtime. Yeah, same here, Mr. Granger. <laughs> <laughs> Quite lively, isn't it? I, uh, Given you a, a bit of everything, I hope that's all right. Thank um, you. White meat for Mr. Granger. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, there's bristles on my leg. Oh. <laughs> you want to write to Evelyn home? No. <laughs> this one, look, it's not been plucked properly. Mm. Oh, it's put me right off. Mmm, <laughs> it's light and leather. Mm. You should have had the alibi. It's quite nice, really. <laughs> I can't get my fork into mine. Uh, leg or horse's nose, Mr. Humphreys? Neither, thank you. I'm just going to toy with my sprouts. <laughs> now, don't forget yourself. Oh. I think I'll 
call it a day. Hope you've left enough room for the pudding. Ah, now that's what I was looking forward to. No, Miss. Well, what about the brandy to pour over it? The other waitress is bringing you a bottle. Mm. Oh, that oh. sounds more like it. <laughs> <laughs> I must say a flaming pudding just adds the final touch to Christmas. Yes, and let's hope it's better than the flaming turkey. <laughs> <laughs> a compliments of grace, brothers. Oh, look, no expense there. <laughs> it's lost weekend all over again. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's a gesture. Shall I do the honours? Oh, you, yes, Brad. and do hurry up. I'm still famished. <laughs> Very curious. Hey, what's wrong with that brandy? Perhaps it's got soaked up by a current. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Christmas, all. You, uh... Trying to warm the pudding, Captain. <laughs> I'm trying to light the brandy. Ah, well, what you want is a drop of this, mate, isn't it? What's that, Mr. Yeah. It's pure wood alcohol, that. <laughs> Where did you get it from? Oh, maintenance. We use it for stripping varnish. <laughs> Did you say your pudding tastes funny? No, no, no. That's 97% proof, that is. It's completely tasteless and it won't leave a trace. <laughs> He's right. It hasn't left a trace. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Captain. Uh, doesn't usually do that. Uh, uh, still, I'll remember next year, next Christmas, uh, to use less. So this has been a lovely lunch. Do you think we could stand the excitement of pulling our crackers? Oh, yes, let's try and get some fun out of it. Well, Captain Peacock, as heads of department, I think we should pull together. <laughs> There's nothing for me. Oh, well, you didn't buy a ticket, did you? <laughs> well, I mean, I feel such a fool sitting here looking normal. Mrs. Stoker's teeth. Do I look a fright? <laughs> I think it's an improvement, actually. <laughs> I should have had these when I was tackling that turkey. <laughs> oh, I like your lips, Mr. Humphreys. Climb upon my knees. <laughs> oh, doesn't Mr. Granger look funny? <laughs> he reminds me of somebody. I know exactly who. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rumbo. Exactly. <laughs> Even down to the bald head. <laughs> On the contrary, Captain Peacock, I do not think. <laughs> Whatsoever. No, of course not, Mr. Rumbo. It's. <laughs> you must excuse us. <laughs> I'm afraid that, that the whole occasion just sort of overcame us. <laughs> Can we have a little more decorum, please? Please. Yes, well, <clears throat> I've come to inform you that maintenance have finished their work on your department. No, oh, good. Oh, here's young oh. Mr. Gray. Good afternoon, everybody. Don't, don't get up. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Enjoy your lunch. Well up to the usual standard, Mr. Yeah. Gray. <laughs> One has to push the boat out occasionally. Mm. Pity it was the Marie Celeste. <laughs> uh, when you've finished, I want you all to go up to the boardroom and choose your novelty costumes. <laughs> I, I feel sure they'll prove a great attraction and really pull the public in. No doubt of it at all, Mr. Gray. <laughs> well, uh, carry on, everybody. I'll see you later, Mr. Rambold. <laughs> How's it going, Mr. Mash? Mr. Mash! Oh, uh, the men are almost finished, sir. Uh, if you could just give us a moment. Yeah, well, do hurry up. They're on their way down. Certainly, sir. Rumpel still skids. He's going to flame him. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I say so, sir. It's very hot inside this snowman. Never mind, the effect is excellent. It was a parrot. Behave yourself. <laughs> Bravo, both of you. Splendid. Honestly, I feel like Gary Glitter in this lot. You'll be lucky. <laughs> well, honestly, I look a right nana. I'm sure none of us is actually overjoyed by this charade, Miss Brown. <laughs> an egg, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, I hope nobody expects me to, to sit on a case. <laughs> do, do I have to have this funny quiver round the back? <laughs> You've always had a funny quiver round the back. <laughs> Belt up or I'll break your other leg. <laughs> I see you're not bothering to dress up then, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> On my way from the enchanted boardroom, I found this slipper on the stairs. I wonder whose dainty foot it'll fit. Hey, that's mine. It belongs to me other foot. Well, you shall go to the hop tonight, oh. dear. <laughs> I really must congratulate you all on the way you've entered into the spirit of things. Well, I haven't, and I still think it's stupid. Mm. Boil it. Ready when you are. Oh, blimey. <laughs> I'll bet Walt Disney's turning in his grave. <laughs> I object to looking like a boiled egg. <laughs> Shall I unveil the magic enchanted land, what we've knocked up? Yes, sir. Uh, please do. I bet it's a cheap load of rubbish. All right, lads. Go on, Ed. What do you think of this? <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh, it's lovely. It's pretty. It's a gingerbread house. <laughs> and now for the gents. Have they decorated that as well? <laughs> All right, lads. Oh, isn't that marvellous? Yes, it takes me back to the days when I was a little boy and I was taken to my first pantomime. Speaking as a snowman, I'm beginning to feel more at home now. <laughs> Holly, mistletoe, big fir trees, and once again a splendid reason to celebrate the festive season. Christmas time is here. I've knocked up a land enchanted, Christmas trees, freshly planted, and the reason for my smile, the overtime made it worthwhile. <laughs> I, although a senior member, get like it is in November. That's why he's dressed up as an egg, and I've lost half my inside leg. Speaking on behalf of blouses, it's rather drafty around the houses. That must be why I saw you shiver. Should have worn a bigger quiver. <laughs> Holy Mrs. <laughs> Water for Mr. Granger. Oh, Humphreys looks so charming. It's his smile that's so disarming. How kind, and in my world of prince, I'd still like Christmas food and peace. Oh, mistletoe, big fir trees, and once again a splendid reason to celebrate the festive season. Christmas time is here. Young Mr. Grace. And there's the bell. Sit down, sir. You've done very well. We're so happy with our motto. Here's a bottle. Let's get blotto.
sleep, eh? I bet you was wondering whether Father Christmas got your note up the chimney, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Santa, please fill my stocking up with something I can play with. But go make it a... <laughs> but as long as it's not the wife's leg. <laughs> Mr. Bash, I am earlier than normal because Mr. Rumbold has called a very important meeting about uh, the Christmas sales drive. Oh, yeah. So, would you mind setting up the table and chairs in the centre of the floor and getting some coffee? Yes, I would mind. It ain't my job. That militant attitude is not part of the Christmas spirit. And what is more, I shall be reporting you to the head of your union. Oi. I am the head of my union. <laughs> and I am not going to alter my intransigent attitude under any circumstances, or for bribes under 50p. <laughs> you uh, like cream in yours, don't you, Captain? <laughs> come back to your head before you move. <laughs> I'll be all right, I'll be all right. Mr. Lucas unwell. Got a terrible hangover, Captain Peacock, due to a pre-Christmas celebration with a young lady. <laughs> it was a sudden change in altitude coming up in the lift that brought it on again. He went as white as a sheet, so I had to put my arm round him. <laughs> no, that was the reason I went as white as a sheet. <laughs> We had an important conference this morning. You should have gone to bed early. Oh, I did, Captain Peacock. I went to bed early. Then I woke up at five o'clock and thought, hello, I've got an important conference this morning. So I got up and went straight home. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're here in body, if not in spirit. Mm -hmm. mm, there's plenty of spirit, lad. Mm. <laughs> well, good morning, Miss Browns. I'm sorry it's such an early call. You're lucky to have me at all. I don't know, looking like that, I'm not too sure. <laughs> what have you got under there? Spare cheese rolls? I didn't have any time for any breakfast. I have ordered coffee. Yeah, not ordered, Captain. Requested. There is a subtle difference, you know. <laughs> Incidentally, is Mr. Granger and Mrs. Slogan, are they coming to this top-level chat of yours? Well, of course, Mr. Bash. Now, hurry along. I don't think Mrs. Slocum will be. Well, why not? Well, she ran me this morning in a terrible state. Her bus route's on strike and she can't find her umbrella. What has not finding her umbrella got to do with her not getting here? Well, she's got to walk a mile to the station, hasn't she? And in the rain, she's afraid in case her rinse runs. Okay, <laughs> so better cancel her coffee. No, no, no. Mrs. Slocum is a resourceful woman. If anyone can think of a way of getting here, she will. <laughs> what a journey. Do you know, it was dark when I left. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Blimey, you must have frightened a few people riding your broomstick silhouetted against the moon. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got a lift in a friend's car, so I took the opportunity of bringing this up. It's a present for Christmas for a gardening friend of mine. Only I propped it up against the arger and the bristles bent with the heat. <laughs> They're not real twigs at all. It's just cheap Japanese muck. Ooh, I was too kin. Mm. It's disgusting what rubbish some firms are selling these days. You should have reported them to the Consumer Council or whatever they call it. Where did you get it? Here in Harvard. <laughs> and I hope we're not going to be late tonight, because I've left Winston clinging to the curtain ring. He refuses to come down. The mere sight of my pussy drives him mad. Is Winston the lodger? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's my canary. <laughs> he got out when I was changing his sandpaper. <laughs> Well, I, I think we'd all better sit down. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Lucas, Miss Brahms, let's sit down, please. What about Mr. Granger? Never mind old Granger. Where's Mr. Rumbold? Oh, uh, I don't think he's arrived yet. 
No, typical of old Jack he is. Gets us here at the crack of dawn and doesn't bother to turn up himself. It was quite a gale blowing when I left this morning. <laughs> Perhaps every time he turned to say goodbye to his wife, the wind caught him behind his ears and blew him in again. <laughs> In his office, to, in case he's already in. I was worried about getting here on time today, you know. And, and I couldn't put in an alarm call because I've been tossed for a week. <laughs> What's that? Toss, T O S, temporarily out of service. <laughs> Couldn't you have it fixed? Yes, as soon as I pay the bill. <laughs> Crown everything. My, my striker on my alarm clock's gone on strike. All it does is buzz. So there I was, with it clutched in my hand, by my ear, and I couldn't get to sleep for the ticking. Anyway, <laughs> here we are then. Refreshments for the troops, courtesy of Captain Peacock. On the contrary, they're ten pence each. <laughs> thought it was too good to be true. Well, it is. Now, where was I in my story? You were lying in bed with it ticking in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> my alarm clock doesn't work. It's well, probably was... your pinger, you know. But what happened? Well, there I was, you see, lying there, worried about going to sleep, and, and I dozed off, and I dreamt I was winding it up. Woke up wet through. <laughs> Inspiration? No, I hadn't screwed the top of my hot water bottle. Can I, can I have your attention, please? Now, as Mr. Rumbold is obviously un unavoidably detained, I, I think I should take over. <clears throat> Quite simply, uh, what we're looking for is ideas to push Christmas sales on this floor. Now, has anybody come up with anything? No, I haven't come up with anything. Mind you, it was touch and go when I saw Miss Brown's cheese roll. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, as head of the ladies' section, you must have some ideas. Well, I've been thinking about this. And I think we should have lots of trimmings. Something to make people sit up and take notice. Mm -hmm. Uh, give us the real Christmas spirit. You know, snow round the display stands, mistletoe in the fur muffs, a sprig of holly in the underwear. <laughs> if that doesn't make people sit up and take notice, nothing will. <laughs> I've got an idea. Why don't we give away uh, kisses to the gentleman customers? <laughs> He was talking about the ladies' department, not ours. I meant that. No, I'm not quite with you, Mr. Humphrey. Well, when a gentleman comes in to, to buy something for his wife, Miss Brahms could give away a free kiss with every purchase over ten pounds. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, are you suggesting that I also should do that? No, we'd make a reduction in your case, anything over ten pounds. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, will you keep your mouth shut? I will if you will. <laughs> I do hope I'm not too late. I'm afraid Mrs. Granger fa failed to rouse me this morning. Oh, that's understandable, Mr. Granger. I'll sit down, Mr. Granger, and I'll just do a recap on the ideas so far. I shouldn't bother. Look, <coughs> what we're looking for is something to attract people of all ages. And what we must bear in mind is that when people come shopping in a store like ours, they bring their children. Now, if we could perhaps think of something to uh, occupy them while their parents browse around. What a good idea. <laughs> I dislike children in 